Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Donnie Graham Builds. Today we are in my neighbor's closet. <laughs> they were driving by, saw me working and asked if I did commission work. I said, absolutely, I love to do commission work. So they want to get more functionality out of this space. So let's see if we can turn this into this. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but just give me a little bit of time. We, we did a lot in here. Let's get to work. So my neighbors and I spent some time talking about what they wanted the closet to look like. Um, I thought I had a good idea on what they were talking about, but I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. We whipped together a quick SketchUp file to give them a visual and they were on board. So we were good to move forward. When it comes to building built-in uh, closet cubbies and cabinets and things of that nature, you really have two options in terms of materials. You can use plywood, three quarter inch, or you can use MDF. Uh, we opted for plywood here. In my opinion, it's a lot sturdier. It will hold up a lot better and last a lot longer. And it's just a lot easier to work with than MDF. And for this project, we used a total of three sheets of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, which was roughly about $6,000 at Menards. I tell you what, these prices are getting out of control. On a totally different note, does anyone else ever pick up a couple of sticks and immediately pretend they're gladiator swords and start swinging them around as such? Nope, just me? Cool. Mm. All right, so have I complained about the price of lumber in this video thus far? On your end, and you've already seen it, but on my end, I don't really know what it's gonna look like yet at this point. I bought this same setup, three sheets of three quarter inch four by eight Baltic birch plywood to make that cabinet roughly seven months ago. It was $55 a sheet then. I just paid $85 a sheet. That means I paid $90 more to get the exact same thing. Absolutely atrocious. And not only that, look at this thing. It's like a potato chip. Absolutely annoying that we're paying these kind of prices for lumber that is not even top quality. But there are things we can do to eliminate this kind of difficulty in projects. We don't have to make things that have huge bows in them. So things you can do to help limit that being a factor is one, cut your long pieces from the straightest you have. That way it's not cuffed over a long distance. Second thing you do is if you are cutting shorter things like shelves that we'll be cutting, cut them out of the bowed pieces because they're smaller, we'll eliminate most of that bow as we cut those out. Let's break things down. Now, there's not a whole lot going on here as far as breaking down plywood. One piece of advice that I will give you if you're using a track saw and a table saw combination, use the track saw to rough cut things down. Um, in this case, our shelves were 10 inches deep. Um, so I rough cut them down to 10 and a half. And then I did my final passes on the table saw uh, with all four walls without moving my fence. And this made sure they were all 100% consistent. Now, I imagine the safety police are freaking out here for two reasons. One, this is a pretty large sheet of plywood that I'm handling on my own. And two, I'm wearing gloves while using the table saw. Here's the thing, I hate splinters, so I like wearing gloves. If you don't mind getting the occasional splinter, don't wear gloves. Uh, and as far as the plywood sheet size, I'm 6'5", my wingspan's a little bit longer than that, so I'm pretty comfortable holding this size sheet and going through. But if you're not, get a friend, get a neighbor, get a youth, or cut it down on your track saw or your circular saw. There are multiple ways to get things done in this shop. Anyway, once we had our walls cut down, we could look at getting our shelves finalized. And here you see a little bit of that bow, but as we cut this shorter and we attach it to the walls, that bow is gonna totally vanish in the shelf, which is really handy because no one likes a potato chip for a shelf. Now, if you'll recall at the beginning of the video when I showed you the SketchUp file, these corner cabinets have a diagonal opening, which means all the shelves need to have a diagonal opening. And I had to figure out a way to do this consistently across all 12 shelves, six on either side. And what I decided to do was make a temporary sled for my table saw. 
So this is actually a technique that I picked up from Chris and Sean over at Four Eyes Furniture. Basically, you just cut a plywood sheet to the exact width of your fence. That way it lines the edge, lines up with the blade of the table saw. You line the line up that you need to cut at with the blade, and then you lock it in place with a couple of scrap blocks. And this makes a perfectly repeatable cut, like so. Okay, and after hours of cutting things down, instead of three sheets of plywood, we have 12 home plates, four side shelves, one back shelf, and four walls. Um, tomorrow we will start doing pocket holes and edge banding, and we'll be off for paint. Again, we're using plywood here, so this is a perfect time for pocket holes to shine. This is the whole purpose of a pocket hole screw. Um, is to pull cabinetry together and pull built-ins together. So uh, I'm using my K4 here, but if you don't have the K4, I think it's, it's like $100. You can pick up the mini and it's like 16 bucks and you can do the exact same thing. It would just take you a little longer. For the edge banding, I'm using the Pure Bond Iron-On Edge Banding. Um, normally, I like to use hardwood edge banding, but considering the distance and tolerances we were working with in the closet, I thought this would save us some space uh, and give us more functionality overall. And it's fun to watch uncoil. <laughs> uh, this stuff's really simple to use. Uh, basically, you just get the edge you want, roll out a little bit. I usually break it or cut it to the length that I need. That way, I don't have just the whole spool flopping around and then get an iron plugged in, get it really hot, actually just take any water out of it. Um, and yeah, just put it on there and it will melt the adhesive on the underside and that will stick to your plywood. Okay, so we're all veneered up, but if you look at it from this side, it's pretty ugly. You can see all these chips here, not chips, but like it's, it's over, it's not flush. Uh, there's a real easy way to take, do this. They make tools, but I don't want to pay for the tool. So you take a, wait for it, razor blade, and just kind of ease it in there. You can slowly kind of take some of this stuff off. And then you've got to come back, which is really important because you can never get it perfect with just the razor blade. Come back with a sanding block, usually 220, maybe 180, depending on how much is left and kind of get a nice clean edge. I'll show you here in one second. Then I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and sand everything nice and smooth before getting assembled because sanding inside of cubbies is really difficult. And I'm gonna level with you guys. This sander is awesome. Like I absolutely love using it. I don't hate sanding at all. The dust collection is superb. Um, the shop's just not covered in dust. Every time I finish sanding, I'm not covered in dust. It's, it's an investment, but it was a really, really good purchase. Super happy with it. That finally brings us to assembly. Uh, again, assembly here, we're using pocket hole screws and glue. Uh, I did do the math and found out that 13 and three quarter inches was the distance we needed between each shelf in order to get them evenly spaced for six shelves for this distance that we had for the height. Uh, so all I did was cut down a spacer block that was exactly 13 and three quarter inches. And then I could wedge that in between each shelf uh, while I was assembling to make sure everything was totally even and level. Now seems as good a time as any. If you're enjoying this content and you're liking this and you feel like you're gaining something from it, please consider liking, subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps us out and it lets me know what kind of videos you guys are enjoying. If there's one piece of advice I could add for assembling something like this is use gravity to your advantage. It's way easier to flip the piece upside down and drive a screw down than it is to have it up right side up and driving the screw upward. Unrelated, 
When I had finished this, I noticed that the storm had stopped and there's a really nice rainbow outside. So I thought that'd be cool to add to the video. Now, where are those Skittles? For finish, we opted for a semi-gloss white paint. Uh, this will match the trim and the closet as well as the door and trim of the rest of the house. So it all just kind of looks like it was supposed to be there. I think I did a total of three coats to make sure that everything was really well coated and had a good layer of protection. And you could totally roll these on or brush these if you wanted to. I just happen to have this HBL pre-sprayer and that just stands for high volume, low pressure. It does really well with paint and stains and finishes. I'll leave a link to this one down in the description below if you wanna check it out. It's, it's about $100, which is, believe it or not, fairly cheap for HBL pre-sprayers. And it does a fairly good job. So you don't actually really have to buy the really expensive three, $400 sprayer in order to get good results. Once everything was painted, I just got a couple of coats of finish on our closet hanging rods. These are poplar. I know I'm becoming the poplar guy, as a friend of mine told me. So I wanted to make sure I snuck that in here somewhere. Um, but these added a nice little level of contrast against everything that was white in the closet. And now it's finally time for the install. Uh, I started by marking out the studs to make sure I had nice, good anchoring points for the shelves. And I know what you're thinking, what the heck, the shelves just showed up. Because of how tight the closet was and the only real angle you could shoot the closet was from right where it's standing now, I had to move it to get the shelves in there and then really couldn't put it back in place until I had already gotten the shelves mounted. So sorry about that. The installation video is a little shaky, but you'll see how it turns out. If you're a DIYer like I am, uh, I know I'm kind of hitting that semi-pro level because I've been doing this for a few years, but this is a really simple way to take your, your built-ins or your shelves just up a level. Um, take some silicone caulk, this stuff's like $3 a tube, put some painter's tape up, and then just use one of these little tools and round everything in. It gets rid of any kind of seams or gaps that may be between the piece and the wall if the drywall's uneven or if your piece isn't totally straight. It just really takes it up a notch and gives it that professional built-in look. If you were to walk into this closet today, it looks like these have been here the whole time. Uh, and that's, that's what we want. We want these to look like they were just part of the original house. One other helpful tip that no one really mentioned to me before I started trying to do this uh, is a little of this stuff goes a long way. Even when you're laying the bead and it looks too thin to fill in the whole space, once you kind of use the tool and smear it, wipe it, whatever you want to call it, or your finger, and balance everything out, like it'll fill that in. And you can see here, once we get the tape off and that stuff dries, it just looks like a natural part of the closet. I know this has been a long one, but we're finally ready for that B-roll. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's video. If you enjoyed what you saw, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. I'm putting videos out like this roughly every two weeks and it really helps the channel when you guys engage with the content and engage with me. This was challenging. Uh, Built-ins are, are never easy because it's not a standalone piece of furniture. You have to incorporate what's already there. Uh, if you know anything about housing framing, it's rarely ever square and closets even less so. So we ran into some issues there, but ultimately we were able to get it done and really maximize the space in this closet for our clients. So headaches aside, we persevered and we got it done and so can you. So until next time, get out there and get your project started.